You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Resilience is remarkable. Mary Walden, founder of Change Therapy, reveals the power of resilience on Big Waves, Strong Boat. Listen as Mary guides her listeners on a transformational journey, weaving inner self-love with learning to share that love with others and defining the role resilience plays in achieving both. So please welcome the host of Big Waves, Strong Boat, Mary Walden. Welcome to Big Wave Strong Boat. I am so happy you have chosen to tune in tonight. If you have listened to this show in the past, you know that we have put a lot of attention on how people relate to one another, how people connect. We know that loneliness and disconnection is on the rise in the Western world, and one of the goals of this show is to explore ways to address this. Tonight, we will take a deep dive into human connection as we explore creating extraordinary interactions. And we are so fortunate to be able to explore how to feel better and live better through creating extraordinary interactions with one of the world's preeminent researchers on human behavior and connection. My guest tonight is Dr. Mavis Sai. Mavis has made it her mission to attend to the crisis of loneliness and disconnection, and the efforts she has made towards this end are extensive. She's an associate director and research scientist at the Center for Social Connection at the University of Washington. She is co-author of several books on a widely used treatment modality that she co-created called Functional Analytic Psychotherapy. She's the director of the specialty clinic uh, focusing on functional analytic psychotherapy at the University of Washington, and she is the founder and spirit behind the Awareness, Courage, and Love Global Project, an internationally focused grassroots organization that is missioned to bring people together in meaningful ways and build our ability and our courage to become more connected with one another. So let's get to what promises to be a lively and inspiring hour. Please welcome Dr. Mavis Sai. Welcome, Mavis. Thank you, Mary. That was quite an introduction. I'm feeling embarrassed. Why? It was all true and, and fantastic. You are a pioneer and and having recognized the need to put attention on this crucial part of being human. And um, I've witnessed that change myself, so I'm so delighted that you're here. I'm really honored to be here talking with you, Mary. So um, our listeners are, are definitely tuned in to this uh, reality around loneliness and the separateness that we have felt uh, across the Western world over the last um, couple of decades. And I know you've had your eye on this for some time. And you even did a tremendous uh, TED Talk on creating extraordinary interactions. So why don't we start with what, what exactly is an extraordinary interaction? Mary, the word extraordinary comes from Latin. Um, Extraordinum, which means out of outside the normal course of events. Synonyms include remarkable, exceptional, and unforgettable. Extraordinary interactions are created by open-hearted disclosure 
of what feels vulnerable and outside of one's comfort zone. They were received with warmth, acceptance, and non-judgment. And there's also expressed appreciation of the other's impact. So those are the three components of what defines an extraordinary interaction. And I'm, I'm hoping to have some extraordinary interactions with you on this show, Mary. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, this is this is quite uh, a target, right? This is quite, um, to lay it out, as something so exceptional and unforgettable. And you've outlined exactly those three components that you aim for, that open-hearted disclosure. What do you mean by that, open-hearted disclosure? It means feeling into what's tender in our hearts what feels vulnerable to say it's what we normally would not express readily so that stepping outside of our comfort zone and into an area that feels risky and what I mean by risky is that you can't always predict someone else's response to what you're going to say right you very, yeah you may very well be rejected you may not get the response you are designing. So in some ways, it's it's taking a risk of sharing something from yourself? Yes. So maybe an experience or a feeling that you're having in the moment um, that maybe isn't, isn't a kind of part of our usual everyday conversation to, to share deeply of that emotional experience. It can be our emotional experiences, our thoughts in the moment. It can be uh, past experiences that we feel embarrassed or ashamed about or would just rather not talk about. It could be uh, ways that we wear masks and project images that are not necessarily totally who we are, kind of yeah. pretending, pretending yeah. to be someone else. And that other element that, that lends to it being extraordinary is that when you take that risk, it's received with warmth and non-judgment, yet you don't entirely know, um, you don't know that you're going to be received that way. That's right. You can't guarantee that you'll be received that way. But what I try to do in my work is prompt people on how to receive in that way, how to be just warm and accepting and to leave one's judgments out of the interaction as much as possible. To just really tune into what the other person is trying to say and to just appreciate that they're revealing something that's more truly who they are. Right, that there's some kind of recognition that that is deeply authentic and and maybe even the recognition of the risk, right? That wow, you know, that what you just shared with me was so important and um, and even being able to reflect back that that sense of of specialness experienced by both people in the interaction. Right. Great, great. Um, so what what about extraordinary, you know, why do these extraordinary types of interactions interest you? I know that, that uh, you're a researcher and you're very familiar with a tremendous amount of statistics that, that, that have drawn you to this work. I think it's both professional and personal experience. And I don't know how interested your audience is in statistics. You know, you're focusing on this as a Western issue. That yes. Loneliness, loneliness and isolation. Yeah. I think it's, it's actually a worldwide problem. Wow. Yeah. But can you tell me more about who your listeners are, what age groups they are in, gender? Yeah. So we have, we have a cross section of listeners, primarily. Um, uh, so far as our, our as our statistics can tell us, they're generally um, people in the U.S. Um, and Western Europe. But we're going to get you a little bit more information on that. We're going to take a quick break, 
And then we'll come back and uh, rejoin our time with Dr. Mavis Sai. You're, you're listening to Big Wave Strong Boat, broadcasting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I am your host, Mary Walden. If you're just joining us, my guest tonight is Dr. Mavis Zai. She is a researcher who has focused her attention on the epidemic of loneliness. Uh, she is a co-creator of functional analytic psychotherapy, and she is also uh, the developer of La- Live with ACL Global, a project that really focuses on helping bring uh, skills and um, techniques to people a- around the world to become more connected and create more uh, authentic and real relationships. Mavis, before the break, we were talking about statistics, and I um, erroneously said that uh, this epidemic of loneliness is really only impacting the Western world, but um, you started to share some statistics that this is something that impacts, that you're seeing impact people worldwide. Could you say more about that? I was starting to quote the World Health Organization, which found in 2013 that the mental health of older adults is a growing international concern, and that it's affected by by factors such as poverty, social isolation, loss of independence, and loneliness, which is the issue that we're focusing on. Yeah, yeah. Um, And then... Loneliness has been found to be associated with a 29% increased risk of early death. And this is in 70 studies representing more than 3.4 million. Wow. Primarily Mm -hmm. primarily from North America, but also from Europe, Asia, and Australia. And I think you already know the statistic, Mary, but loneliness is as lethal as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And it's worse for people than obesity. I I think that's one of the most extraordinary statistics that I've read, that really feeling disconnected and separate from other people can have the impact on your physiological welfare as much as smoking almost a pack of cigarettes a day. That is just, it's phenomenal. Right. And... Loneliness has also been found to increase the likelihood of dementia, heart disease, mm. and, depress- and depression. That's in three different studies. And you said that a number of your listeners are college age. Yeah. In a survey of nearly 48,000 college students, 64% of 
said that they had felt very lonely in the previous 12 months. That's from the American College Health Association in 2017. So this is amazing. It's a multi-generational problem worldwide, but I think definitely more so in, in Western countries. Yeah, it's it's really um, staggering the impact that it's had, and and not only um, th- what's really compelling is the increase um, in the in the recent years of how many people are reporting um, feeling so lonely and disconnected. And I, I know this epidemic of loneliness is of great concern to you, so much so that you have made addressing this and building meaningful relationships a worldwide endeavor. So I really want to get uh, get out to our listeners tonight um, all the wonderful things that you're doing to actually create um, an impact to address this. So what are, what's going on for you at the University of Washington? Well, there, there are two aspects of my work. One is just all the research studies that I'm involved in, and the other is the global project that I founded. You, you called it Live With ACL, I think because you're part of it, and you are just <laughs> so, you're so familiar with the terminology. And ACL stands for Awareness, Courage, and Love. Right. So right. Virtual. It's a part of me. Yes. ACL. I should have explained that. <laughs> Awareness, Courage, and Love Global Project. Yes. So... Where are you wanting me to focus right now? On research studies that I'm involved in, or do you want me to talk about the global project? Well, let's first, since we're on the uh, the studies part, let's talk about those uh, research studies that you're a part of now. And then, because I really do want to uh, us to do a deep dive on awareness, courage, and love with... I know we're going to do some questions tonight and invite our listeners. Um, anyone listening, if you want to call in uh, at one 451 1451 and participate um, later in the show with some really engaging um, questions and uh, have an extraordinary interaction, please give us a call and you'll talk to our uh, engineer, Perry, and we'll um, welcome you on to the air. So, But before we get to that, uh, those studies that you're involved with currently, what's going on now? What's going on now is that we are uh, recruiting. We just we actually just finished a study with the general public where they came in for six sessions focusing on awareness, courage, and love interventions versus our control group, which was coming in to watch movies together. We were interested in whether focusing directly on increasing vulnerability and warmth and acceptance and appreciation would increase a sense of connection compared to uh, people doing something together that's fun, but not really getting that interpersonally deep. Right. Yeah, we have an amp- we have we just completed the study, so we're going to be analyzing the data on that. Wow. And uh, we've worked with client populations, people who are seeking therapy for depression, and we compared functional analytic psychotherapy, which focuses on the depth of connection, the authentic connection between therapist and client, versus a cognitive therapy, which is, it's a powerful therapy, but it doesn't emphasize authentic connection. And, yes. That's the powerful contribution of of functional analytic psychotherapy because you guys really highlighted not just, um, you know, the quality of the relationship in terms of, because we know, we know from other studies that that relationship between patient and therapist is is deeply important, Um, but I want to explore the other parts of FAP that, that, that separated. And we're going to get to that. We have to take a quick break. You're listening to Big Waves Strong Boat broadcasting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. 
Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I am Mary Walden, here with my guest, Dr. Mavis Sai, uh, a researcher at the University of Washington who has focused a great deal of her efforts on combating the epidemic of loneliness. And just before the break, we were talking about functional analytic psychotherapy. It's a, a modality that she co-created, and we were talking about the 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 elements that significantly differentiate and make this a very uh, special and meaningful treatment. Um, And we were talking about the relationship, but there's some other extra component to that relationship that is so special and of deep focus in this type of therapy. Can you say more about that, Mavis? We have these more technical roles that have been translated into the principles of awareness, courage, and love, and we're asking therapists to engage in the therapy with awareness, courage, and love, at the same time encouraging clients to live their lives with awareness, courage, and love. So it means it means showing up in the therapeutic relationship as a therapist not just as a therapist, but as an authentic human being, of course, in the service of the client. Yeah. And so you took this, how did we get to these core elements of awareness, courage, and love in a therapeutic sense through functional analytic psychotherapy to awareness, courage, and love, the global project? That's a really good question. We have this worldwide following of therapists who are interested in functional analytic psychotherapy, or FAP, F-A-P, FAP for short. And what I found is that there's a bottleneck. In order to access FAP principles, people had to be in therapy. And I wanted there to be much broader dissemination because it's these are such powerful principles and concepts, I wanted everyone to have access to them, not just clients and therapy. That's so amazing. That's, yeah. yeah, that's that's why I created the ACL Global Project. And so I do these Zoom trainings online of people all over the world who want to lead chapters of awareness, courage, and love for people in their daily lives or, or even strangers over meetups that they don't know. And we focus on experiential exercises that facilitate people connecting more deeply with themselves and with others. And uh, just self-expression, deep listening, acceptance, self-care, embracing a vulnerability in themselves and others. So in the trainings, it's very experiential. So I'll, I'll lead people through a guided meditation in Zoom. Uh, people get to do breakout rooms where they talk intimately with two or other two or three other people, and they could be in Australia or Europe or South America. And Mary, you've been 
you've been part of that. What's your experience been? Absolutely. I have been. And what has been so profound to me, um, being on those calls, being on those trainings, is that even though we are using... um, an internet platform, uh, and the, and that particular platform is Zoom. Uh, we ha- we can see each other. It's an audio and uh, video um, platform. It's really been just amazing to me how connected and how uh, real relationships have developed um, among us uh, worldwide. Uh, I've had some. Uh, made some lovely relationships with people in South America and um, it's really been uh, and in Europe and it's really just knocked me over and um, it's something that uh, I've had the the uh, privilege to see in action and it's one of the reasons why um, you know I want to put more and more of my attention on this and so I, I, I think it's amazing what you're doing I know that you're in I I think maybe you said it, 92 cities, 26 countries, six continents, really, really creating a, um, a global village that really knows how to interact with one another and, um, create meaningful, meaningful connections. So, um, it's really been extraordinary. Yes. And it's just really thrilling to me, all the people who are involved and, and that you're involved, Mary. Well, thank you. I know that um, one of the things that we were exploring to to do tonight is to facilitate some extraordinary interactions. And I thought that we would uh, do that between the two of us. And then perhaps... um, if someone would like to call in and participate as well, um, at one 451 1451 I understand we have at least one caller on the line right now, and we'll invite her in in just a moment. But I'd like you to set this up, uh, Mavis, around the questions. What purpose do these particular questions serve? Uh, these are the questions that were in my TED Talk. And I've used them over and over again to facilitate powerful connections. So I know they work. And I don't know if we have time for all six of them. Can we just do a few of them? Sure, I think that'd be great. I think, uh, would we like to invite, first of all, before, before we go to our caller, I want to remind people that on Facebook, you can have access to all these resources, including a link to Mavis's TED Talk, as well as uh, a connection, a link to Awareness, Courage, and Love Global Project. So yeah, let's get started with these questions. Um, and we have a caller on the line, Catherine. I think we have a caller. Well, we'll hello? come back to her. Yep. Oh, hello. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Can, can you hear me now? Absolutely. Yes. We can. Perfect. Thank hello. You. Hi, hello. Mavis. Hi, Catherine. I'm so glad you called in. So you're you're willing to join us in responding to uh, deep questions? Well, um, <laughs> yes. And also, I, I was intrigued by what you were saying about ACL and also as it pertains to loneliness. And I was just thinking about um, with ACL and um, bringing it into my community on the ground, what would be, in your, in your creation of this, what would be the best way for me to kind of bring it into my community and start talking with people one-on-one to help other people get involved in this? It just sounds so spectacular. Catherine, are you sure you weren't planted? <laughs> My gosh, we love her. Uh huh. <laughs> so we can start to answer this question. We're running out of time in this segment. We, you know, let's put a pin in that. Let's remind our listeners that again, you can find resources at Facebook at Big Wave Strong Boat. You can send us an email. We oh boy, we we also have an email question tonight. Boy, we're, it's just flowing in. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Big Wave Strong Boat. 
Broadcasting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy to understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at Renee at Smith Title Services com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. If you're a person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Kohler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I'm your host, Mary Walden, here with my guest, Dr. Mavis I from the University of Washington. And we've been exploring uh, the epidemic of loneliness and how she has put together her energies and research acumen to cultivate awareness, courage, and love global project. And um, we had a fantastic caller in the last segment, Catherine, who was looking forward to finding out how to get involved with the global project. And we'll have all that information for you at the end of the show. Um, Right now, we're going to get back to the questions that... um, Mavis uses to facilitate extraordinary interactions. So, so Mavis, through your research, you have figured out six questions that when two people ask each other these questions and explore them together, these questions specifically help cultivate an extraordinary interaction. And so tonight, you and I are going to walk through these questions right now and make our own extraordinary interaction. So let's get started with you asking me the questions. All right, Mary, what is a strong value or conviction you have that you're willing to make sacrifices for? Uh, well, I can definitely say that um, one of the things that I'm that is a deep uh, conviction of mine, a deep value of mine, is that people are seen and heard, and that. Um, I really want to uh, live my life in a way that helps facilitate that. And uh, part of part of that value um, hopefully is manifested in this show and in other uh, podcasts and things that I've done. And yeah, so I guess I sacrifice time and sleep <laughs> and, um, <laughs> to kind of... Uh, to put my attention on that and to opening my heart. It's such a beautiful answer. And I feel similarly. I think that I sacrifice my my personal time uh, to really put my energies into the Awareness, Courage, and Love Global Project because I want people to be seen and valued and heard. And I want everyone to rise to live to their truest and best selves. So that's and that is better. truly evidenced by all how you really have spent your time as a researcher, as a clinician, as 
an academic to really um, make a great effort to attend to this worldwide. And so that's really wonderful. But Thanks, Mary. Next thank question? You. Yes, next, next question. Next question. All right, let's do it. Okay. What do you long for? What do I long for? And uh, I, mm-hmm. I really appreciate your taking a moment and because you, you didn't just start talking. Yes. You did the question and I could just feel you settling into your heart more. Because that's, that's what we're inviting people to do, to really sit with the questions in a deeper way. So what do you long for in here? I, I think that's such an important point, too, because I think we can have our reflex answers. But to really take a moment, um, what I long for is uh, balance, a balanced life where I can show up authentically as myself um, in the context of being a clinician, but also in the context of being a person, being a mom, being a friend. Um, and and even in the context again of doing this show, like this is about being real, and we 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 certainly, um, you know, I think that there's there's space to show flaws and space to show um, humanness. And I what I long for is that having that awareness as often as possible. I don't know that it. It, it's possible to have it all the time at every moment, but I, I long to have that as often as possible. What do you long for, Mavis? That answer changes depending on who I'm talking to. and uh, Yeah, so the answer that pops up at the moment is I long to really be seen for my deeper self and I think a lot of people project onto me mm. because I'm sort of a public figure and I would like to to be seen for who I am on a deeper level. Yes, yes. Can yes, you really, yes, you put yourself out there and there is that risk of that. How do you push back on that? I think being vulnerable and saying mm-hmm. things that, that I really think and feel, yeah. And like I started the show by saying, I feel embarrassed. Because mm-hmm. like, you, were, you were just going <laughs> on at length. Oh, I could have gone on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mary. Uh-huh. yeah. Ready for the next question? Yes, let's do it. How would you complete the sentence? I pretend that. Hmm. Uh, well, some days I pretend that uh, everything's okay. You know that I I pretend that I, uh, I I'm I'm pretty good at boxing up my feelings and sort of putting them on the shelf, and I pretend that you know all is well. When sometimes, you know, life happens, and um, and I think I'm pretty good at pretending that. And I really value when you drop your pretenses. And my answer to that is similar, that I'll pretend that I'm calmer than I actually am or I'm more in charge of things than I actually feel. And yeah. 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 I, 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 yeah. I think that's an on easy one. one. Yeah, no, I think that's an easy one to fall into because... Um, you know, uh, uh, vulnerabilities are not so well received. Yes. Yeah. Depends on who. Right. Okay, number four. Shall I go with this one? What would you do if you had the courage? Uh, so this is actually a trick question, sort of, because, Mary, you don't need courage to do anything that's important to you. You just need to do it and feel the fear. You need to figure out how to do things. So for me, this global project is really scary. And I'm just going ahead and doing it anyways. Yes, you are. You are really facing your fear and putting yourself out there. 
We're going to continue with these questions. When we return, we're going to take a quick break. Thank you for listening. You're listening to Big Wave's Strong Boat, live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I'm your host, Mary Walden, here with my guest, Dr. Mavis Sai. And we have been working through some really important questions that are at the core of cultivating extraordinary interactions. And just before the break, um, I asked Mavis the question, what would you do if you had the courage? And you were talking about... um, the courage that you really don't need the courage to do things that are deeply important to you, but that there are things like even uh, endeavoring to do this global reach um, across, you know, and I know you're in six continents to do this uh, worldwide, this uh, awareness, courage, and love project, global project, you did have to face some fear, right? I continually face fears. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you the question what would you do if you had the courage? Another way of framing that question is what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Uh, Oh, this is a tough one for me because um, I mean, I I, I might just, uh, you know sell everything I own and move to a little town in Italy and try to learn Italian and um, learn to make the best pasta on the planet. And um, yeah, it might be something really um, random and sort of turning everything upside down. And, and, you know, even as I say that, I think, oh my gosh, yeah, that would be so courageous and fun but then I think of all the things that I would have to give up and and the relationships that I would impact so I'm a little torn on that one one thing I have a dis- just a continued discussion about that over time because that was so interesting how it came out just so spontaneously yeah and I, and I bet there are listeners who feel the same way that they, they want to upend their lives in some significant way and maybe it doesn't have yeah. to be for forever maybe you can just do that for a year well, yeah, you know, that's the magic of, of Airbnb, too, right? That you right. actually could do this in a sh- uh, shorter, for a shorter period of time. And I agree with you. I think there are, um, I, I bet there are many listeners out there that are thinking, oh, yeah, I would like to kind of uh, upend and take off. So, absolutely. Um, the fifth question of the six is, what's a truth that feels scary or vulnerable to admit? 
So in this moment, my answer to that question, I I lost a very dear friend, one of my closest friends to breast cancer earlier this year. And I'm in significant grief mode and very bewildered by the thought that people leave, they die, and I never get to see them or touch them again. I'm never going to get to hear her laugh again, hear her sing again. And I feel I'm pretty tender a lot of times as I'm grieving. Yeah. That can be scary to admit, because especially when, as you said before in one of your other answers, when people are projecting so much onto you, that can also have the expectation that you you aren't vulnerable and right. you you don't have these deep feelings of loss and longing. Right. Yeah. That's right. What about you? What feels well, what's the truth that feels scary or vulnerable to me? Uh oh I have so many. Um, <laughs> that I get nervous every time I do this show. That um that I am not certain about what's going to happen with my parents long term um, that you know I sometimes um, hear peers of mine who are uh, raising children at home and then also um, managing elderly parents and um, it's scary for me to admit that I don't quite have the taking care of the elderly parent part so worked out and that I'm a little terrified by that. So, yeah, I think that would be that would be at the tippy top of the list. Wow, Mary, uh, this brings me to this last question. What do you appreciate about the person that you've been sharing with? I just appreciate how willing you are to let me and all your audience members you know what's scary or vulnerable for you to admit but I can't believe it that you just wheeled off like three things just like that <laughs> oh yeah there's yeah. more <laughs> trust me <laughs> there's so much more yeah um, just yeah I, I just I love how authentic you are and how deeply caring you are and your commitment to just seeing seeing others authentically and showing yourself and I love how you do this show even though you're nervous <laughs> every time every time yeah, yeah. You're, you're just you're this incredible blessing in my life thank you thank you that gives me such warmth and and I so appreciate you coming on this show and not entirely uh you know we don't have every technical glitch worked out tonight i don't know what happened i feel maybe it's the the residual of the full moon but i so appreciate um how how real you are and how dedicated you are to this work that that benefits so many not even just the people who participate directly in either whether it's uh, FAP treatment with a therapist or it's um, in the ACL and live, uh, live with ACL, the global project, um, because, yes, those people are obviously impacted, but then all the people that they go out into their lives and interact with and are real with and are authentic with and... Um, I just appreciate you showing up both as a human and as a powerhouse. And um, I think those are two, you know, it's hard to hold both of those spaces and you do that with incredible grace. So and I deeply Mary, appreciate you. Mary, I am going to say that it takes one to see one and you are a human and a powerhouse as well. Thank you, Mavis. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Big Waves Strong Boat 
broadcasting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Great Spirit showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colday Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20 year service award from the Burbank City Council. Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Welcome back to Big Wave Strong Boat. I'm your host, Mary Wald, and here with my guest, Mavis I. Mavis, we have had such a fantastic time tonight talking about. Uh, Awareness, Courage, and Love Global Project. And, you know, we have a, uh, an email question, and I wanted to read that to you. Does that sound okay? Yes. All right. Dear Mary, I've listened for the past few months and really appreciate how many different things you cover. Tonight's guest really piqued my interest. I'm on social media all the time and quote unquote connect with so many others. With so many people getting together now this way, why are people feeling more disconnected? Thanks again. That was from Felicia in Akron, Ohio. So thank you, Felicia. Thanks for writing in. I think this is a really important question, and I think this confuses a lot of folks that, you know, they're having so much more interaction, quote unquote, in terms of number, texting, on Facebook Messenger, on uh, Snapchat, and all the different ways that people, quote unquote, connect digitally, and they're feeling disconnected. And I know both you and I have thoughts on this. Why don't you go first, Mavis? Felicia, thanks for the excellent question, and I think that's on a lot of people's minds because so many of us are on social media. I think it goes to the point that I was making about vulnerability and how that's so important in feeling close to someone. I don't think there's a lot of vulnerability on social media, and uh, people are focusing on all the positive things that are happening in their lives, which is great, but then there's this false sense of everyone is happier than I am, everyone is everyone else is doing better than I am. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mary? Yeah, we uh, Dean and I, my um on air producer, we've talked about this on the show that people are really curating their lives for the consumption of others and they're showing one I think you used the word mask earlier in the show and I think that's kind of what you know um, social media is the ultimate mask I also do think it's interesting though because it's not simply the technology because on um, on Zoom and other platforms like Zoom people can have real interactive conversations um and I know you uh, use that on the ACL Global Project for our um, monthly trainings. So, yeah, uh, thanks again, Alicia, uh, Felicia, for that uh, email message and uh, question. 
And, you know, speaking of the ACL Global Project, I'm sure there are some listeners out there that would really like to get involved. How might they do that? So I think you said you were going to post information on your Facebook page. I did, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, so they can go directly to livewithacl.org and say that they would like information on becoming a chapter leader, and I will send information. Uh, People wonder what fees are involved, and the trainings are free. Which is amazing, free, yes. Yeah, they are on the first Sundays, typically, Uh, so 10 times a year, not in June and August, but Pacific Time, 1 to 2.30 p.m., and... I, I write these detailed protocols that people can use with those that are already in their lives that they want to get closer to. But what you do is go to a Zoom training and actually experience the protocol live so that you know what it feels like before you meet it with someone else. And that is, it's really a powerful experience. I think the other thing that's important to point out, that's for people who are interested in leading these groups. You can also go on uh, the app meetup.com and see if there is an ACL uh, global project near you. And you can actually just participate in the group. You don't necessarily have to be a leader. So... We are at the end of the show. Mavis, I want to thank you so much for taking time um, to chat with us tonight and share all the wonderful things that you're doing and how you're impacting the spirit of this world. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me on as a guest, Mary. It's been a pleasure. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in tonight. Remember, you can find us on Facebook at Big Wave Strong Boat. Please comment, and even if you like us, you can like us too. Um, you can hear past episodes of Big Wave Strong Boat on iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you'd like to hear a past interview I did with Mavis I, you can also find that on iTunes as well. Search The Mary Walden Show and Mavis I. Thanks again to my guest, Mavis I, and to my awesome engineer, Perry. Thank you for listening. Dean will be back with us next week. Until then, be well. You've been listening to Big Wave Strong Boat with host Mary Walden. Join us each week as Mary helps cultivate the essential ingredients for a joyful life, including self-respect, self-compassion, resilience, and developing lifelong meaningful relationships here on Big Wave's Strong Boat. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.